Hello, my name's Vivian. I'm from the Fiku National Group in Australia. And I'd like to talk to you about the spiritual teaching that we make available here of Billy Meyer. When I came to do this presentation, I was struck with the usual problem of where to start. Where do you start with a teaching that's so vast, it's so deep, it's so detailed and dense. And the story that accompanies it is so profoundly important for Earth humankind and important in understanding the relevance of the teaching. And I'm certainly no expert. But I came to realize that it doesn't matter where I start because wherever I start any topic in the teaching, it ends up revealing the creational natural principles behind all of it. And that's because it's absolutely consistent across the board. And the reason it's absolutely consistent is because it's based on the truth. I thought I'd do my presentation in the garden today. Thank you for joining me. It's really beneficial to be out surrounded by nature. I also recognized when I started this presentation that although the teaching is dense and demanding in places, the message behind it is really very simple as I understand it. It's pay attention to what's true. Pay attention to what's real. Keep paying attention to that. Develop practices and habits that ensure you keep paying attention to it and then use the result of that paying attention to inform your life, to form everything that you do. It really is simple and the form that the paying attention takes is also simple. It's as simple as it sounds. Use what senses you have that you're aware of to pay attention to anything in your reality. I'd start with myself. I pay attention to my body, to my consciousness, to my personality, to my innermost self to the extent that I understand that. We can pay attention to things that are of a material nature, things that are of a non-material nature. Pay attention to things in our environment, other animals, plants, other people, objects. The teaching explains in various places. If you pay attention to nature itself, then you come to understand and recognize the creational natural laws that govern all of our existence. And when we've come to do that, then we can really start to live a harmonious life that's free of the exaggerated negativity and exaggerated suffering that's so, and difficulty, that's so, so characteristic of our life on planet Earth. You might be thinking, you're making this sound very easy, just paying attention to reality. So why does it sound so strict and stern and why does it take so long? Why is it hard? And my answer to that is, if we've maintained something for a very long time, an erroneous idea, an erroneous way of thinking, if we've nurtured that over and over again, something that was attractive but was fundamentally flawed, then it's very difficult to even recognize that there's a problem with that. And then once we've recognized the problem, it's really difficult to then disentangle it from things and thoughts and ideas in our consciousness that are actually based on what's true. It's a huge undertaking. And that reminds me of a very vigorous vine that I have in my garden. Do you see this vine? It's a gorgeous thing. It's one of my favorites. I've let it grow and grow and grow because I just like it. The problem is it's taken over the whole side of a feature tree in this garden. The idea behind it was fundamentally flawed because it was planted far too close to this feature tree. And now it's going to kill it if I don't pull it down. Have a look at this. It's utterly out of control. You probably can't even see that tree behind it. And it's got to go. And it's going to be an enormous job to disentangle it from the tree. The 
The consciousness of the human being is like a garden. There are desired beneficial plants and there are weeds. And in the case of the earth human being, there are a lot of weeds. My garden is a lot like my consciousness. Some parts are relatively under control. They're fairly well tended, fairly weed free. At least if you look at it from a distance. But other parts are absolutely full of weeds, overgrown with weeds. Look at this. This whole section of my garden is full of these. And it's not just a matter of me going to a lot of effort to pull these out because underneath the ground there are all these root parts that are just going to sprout again. And I'm going to have to dig up the whole section in order to pull out all those roots and then that's going to do damage to the desired plants, to my, my chosen plants. So we have a lot of work to do in regard to pulling out our weeds. Obviously, attentiveness is key to being able to look at the nature of our consciousness and determine what are the weeds and what are the beneficial plants and how to go about pulling them apart, disentangling them. The whole thing about paying attention to reality is also absolutely key in getting an understanding of Billy's teaching. We may get stuck on certain parts of, of the explanations that can be quite involved and difficult, such as regarding true love, true equality, neutral positive thinking, self-responsibility and all sorts of things. But all of these things become more understandable as we actually ourselves have a better understanding of reality through our attentiveness to reality. So. They just become a natural side effect as we get to understand the nature of our consciousness. It just becomes self-evident that it's the consciousness and our thoughts that determine the form of our, that our life takes. And as we become more familiar with what we truly are and what our fellow human beings truly are through true attentiveness, concentrated attentiveness, then the deeper form of love, the genuine love, which is based on understanding, is just a side effect of that. And an understanding of our equal value to each other is also just a side effect of that. And why, why would we not do this when all the other benefits are things such as we lessen our anxiety as we increase our awareness of the calm assurance of our innermost selves. We become more confident. We have a greater sense of direction. We increase our capacity for universal love and empathy as our understanding grows. Our effectiveness is increased as we become more aware of the might of our consciousness and how we can direct our thoughts as we choose our self-esteem grows, our value, our appreciation of other people grows, our sense of connectedness, our sense of selflessness, our creativity, our ability, it all grows as we start to really thrive and we start to expand our knowledge and gain access to also unconscious forms of knowledge such as from our previous lives, innumerable incarnations, as Billy describes it. The ultimate practice of attentiveness is meditation. It's really quite simple, again, difficult, but a simple thing to understand in that. It is simply the discipline of learning concentration so that we can focus our attent attentiveness on anything that's in our field of view. 
as we choose without interruption. I wanted to include some quotes in this presentation from Billy's texts, but I was struck again with a familiar problem, which is when I go rummaging for, for quotes from Billy, I find bits and pieces that certainly are very valuable in relation to what I'm trying to explain or write about. But they're always deeply embedded in a thicket of explanations about other things <laughs> that I just can't tease it apart. I can't tease it apart enough in order to use that particular quote without causing a bit of a distraction. And I'm overwhelmed by all the different directions that my thoughts are led into when I try and do that. But the, the upside of all this and I can't help thinking the texts were written in order to achieve this, is that I do have to do the work myself to process what I'm reading and to tease apart the different subjects so that I can try to present it to someone else, try to explain it to someone else without it getting too complicated, too complicated for me in the first instance. And this brings me back to the whole importance of making that effort we can't do it without making the effort ourselves. We can't just passive, passively absorb these explanations and think that that's going to work. So that's the benefit of talking to each other and processing the information that way. And on that note, I did find one quote from Might of the Thoughts that refers to this whole process of making the effort ourselves. where Billy is talking about optimism, he says, There is no human being into whom some imaginary God has built power, because if the human being wants to have such power at his or her disposal, then he himself, she herself, must in every regard achieve this with great effort. This inner power and might pertaining to the consciousness and thoughts must then, if benefit is to be gained from them and arise from them, be constantly trained, as is usually also done with the physical muscles, if they are to be developed. So again, it's straightforward, simple, just application is required. And it is only when the inner power and might are trained that the human being is able to thereby bring things, wishes, intentions, ideals and imaginations and so forth to fruition, as a result of which he or she can develop and be creatively and constructively as well as progressively active in his or her inner self or in the external material realms. So I say, why wouldn't we make the effort to do these things when our peace, our harmony, our respect, our dignity, all these things grow, our satisfaction. And that's the end of my explanation for today. Thank you for joining me in my garden. If you'd like to learn more and you haven't yet got the books or read many of the texts, you can start by going to our webpage at au.figu.org and see what you can find there.